Ancient man was a woodworking, fire-using, shelter-building, spear-wielding survivalist. In his humble way, even 500,000 years ago, ancient man could make tools, including stone knives and hatchets for his chores. And these hominids appear to have been very particular about their clothing, using stone tools to soften and shape animal hides. The new discoveries suggest that our ancestors were more sophisticated than previously thought. These early Europeans are known to have battled other predators including cave bears, cave lions, saber-toothed cats and prehistoric hyenas, and turned their pelts into clothing and furs. They may have even driven animals, both predators and prey to extinction, and modified the landscape by setting forest fires, just as modern hunter-gatherers do. Neanderthal man was a strong and adaptable hominid, and walked upright like modern men, not knuckle-dragging like gorillas. They had a huge skull and massive brain, which did not go to waste. Neanderthals also had much thicker necks than modern humans to support their heavy, elongated skulls. Both the back of the skull and the powerful, chinless jaw show muscle attachments that made such a neck unmistakable. The skull, with its prominent brow ridges, suggests an extremely robust race, and the massive and heavy face has a much more savage appearance than that of modern man. The brow ridge's exact function has been the subject of much debate recently. Some researchers hypothesize that it played a role in social signaling between archaic humans, increasing aggressive facial expressions. To cope with the cold, ancient humans developed a complex culture. Anthropologists show how humans not only survived but dominated northern climates despite their evolutionary origins in and biological proclivity for warmer environments. Early humans in Europe hunted beavers and bears 400,000 years ago, but sometimes were driven to cannibalism and other heinous acts. There is ample evidence that these hominins hunted animals, ranging from cut marks on bones to a horse shoulder blade pierced by a wooden spear. These findings are consistent with studies of modern foragers, which show that humans in colder regions rely more on animal prey than those in warmer climates, because meat is high in calories and fats are needed to keep warm. Neanderthals hunted beavers for food and for their pelts. These middle Pleistocene humans systematically fed on these smaller animals. Previously, it was thought that hominins of this period hunted mostly large mammals like rhinoceroses. Until now, cut marks on Paleolithic beaver bones had only been identified on isolated bones. According to the cut mark distribution pattern, Beaver may have been targeted for both their skins and their meat. The researchers examined the approximately 400,000-year-old bones of nearly 100 beavers excavated several decades ago with magnifying glasses and digital microscopes. They were able to identify cut marks from stone tools that indicated intensive use of the carcasses. It's worth noting that the remains mostly are from young adult beavers. Additionally, Analysis demonstrates that Neanderthals were very interested in clothing. A certain proportion of tools were used for working and scraping hides. If they soften the hides, they can use them to make clothes, which no Ice Age hominid would dare to live without. The increased resolution of data on paleoclimatic conditions has also highlighted the importance of hominins living in high latitudes, having complex cultural mechanisms to deal with cold environments. While evidence for fire is readily available for Neanderthals, evidence for clothing remains elusive. Only indirect evidence of clothing can be examined. However, there is evidence of the use of specialized bone tools to smooth hides. The long-held assumption that Neanderthals were less culturally adaptive has led to the belief that Neanderthals lacked complex tailored clothing. However, if hominins in high-latitude, glacial environments required complex clothing for survival and other technologies could be used, the debate over Neanderthal clothing and cognition can be refocused. In a recent paper, researchers present an experimental study that suggests birch bark glue could have been part of the Neanderthal technological repertoire for making tailored and perhaps, more importantly, waterproof garments. They also collected bird feathers, possibly for personal adornment and other practical uses. In fact, evidence is accumulating on their regular and systematic exploitation of birds. Far removed from the mental level of the apes, 
Neanderthal man knew how to wield fire, the greatest single discovery of the human race. Although the use of fire by early hominids may have existed a million years ago, fire-making requires a more sophisticated cognitive process than using and maintaining a natural fire. A tool set is needed to start a fire, demonstrating both a learned understanding of the process and the capacity to create or acquire such a tool set. It is important to gather the right kind of materials from quickly ignitable to start the fire to slower burning to maintain it once it has started. When a fire starts, planning how to use or contain it prevents it from becoming dangerous. According to new research, Neanderthals in France may have used powdered manganese dioxide to make fire. Neanderthals used manganese dioxide, a particular type of manganese oxide, to make fire and did so on demand. Manganese dioxide lowers the temperature at which wood automatically ignites and significantly speeds up the rate at which char burns, which leads researchers to believe that making fire is the most advantageous application for manganese dioxide. This substance could have also been used for torches and even lamps to light dark caves. For use in facilitating fire lighting, the manganese blocks would have needed to be ground to a powder and there is archaeological proof of grinding in the form of a grindstone and a braided blocks. One easy but efficient way to start wood fires with significantly lower wood auto-ignition temperatures and a high rate of combustion is with spark-lit tinder with manganese dioxide powder. Typically, it is assumed that these manganese oxides chunks were gathered for their colouring abilities and used for body decoration, possibly as a form of symbolic expression. From the record of recent hunter-gatherers, it is unknown how manganese dioxide was chosen and used for making fire. As a result, it might offer important insights into Neanderthals' cognitive abilities. Each of these stages involves different types of causal reasoning, cultural transmission and rehearsal, as well as cooperation in gathering and managing the fire. This suggests that both Neanderthals and their modern counterparts had these cognitive abilities and that they may have existed before the evolutionary split between the two species over 500,000 years ago. The capacity to create substances and materials that are not found in nature is one of the characteristics of human intelligence. The use of tools was once taken into account, but since several animals have been found modifying and manipulating materials to be used as tools, it has lost some of its significance as a sign of intelligence. Neanderthal man also discovered at some point that hunting by blunt force trauma is much less effective than killing with a sharp stone spear glued to a shaft. In fact, use where analysis of ancient tools yields several interesting findings. Analysis of the base of stone tools reveals that hominids likely attached spearheads to sticks, resulting in a high-tech spear. It's an important step in human development because it requires combining two materials, a stone tip, and a stick to create a composite tool. Researchers discovered evidence from useware analysis that he was working wood with stone tools, possibly to convert the wood into tools. Evidence suggests Neanderthals used throwing sticks that could be employed to dispatch birds, deer, and smaller animals. A well-thrown stick can break the legs of a deer and down a bird in flight. Although lightweight, the high velocities at which such weapons can be launched could have resulted in deadly high-energy impacts. The fine surface, carefully shaped points and polish from handling suggest this was a piece of personal kit with repeated use, rather than a quickly made tool that was carelessly discarded. Neanderthals even decentered the point on their spear to increase strength. Based on this evidence, the utilization of wood is an obvious outcome of their intimate arboreal knowledge. Their woodworking involved multiple steps, including cutting and stripping off the bark, carving it into an aerodynamic shape, scraping away more of the surface, seasoning the wood to avoid cracking and warping, and sanding it for easier handling. What's more, Neanderthals made glue out of birch bark tar to stick tools together and make clothing. New studies confirm this required skills anthropologists have not been sure our big-headed relatives had. Birth tar also has many other uses, such including as a disinfectant, wood preservative, tanning agent for hides, and a glue to make clothes and shoes. When red ochre is added to the birch bark, this makes it into a thick paste that is used to stick tools together. 
Tar is the oldest known example of members of the human family creating a material that does not occur naturally. When we talk about early technologies that enabled humans to master their surroundings, we usually mention fire or the wheel. Glue making is much less obvious, but very essential. By allowing our ancestors to stick tool components together, they were able to survive in otherwise impossible situations. Neanderthals developed the ability, producing sticky tar from the bark of birch trees, seemingly long before modern humans invented their own adhesives. Not only that, but a 47,000-year-old flint discovered at the bottom of the North Sea demonstrates that glue-making occurred even in areas where conditions would have allowed only small groups of Neanderthals to survive. Regardless of the methods used, prehistoric tar-making likely necessitated a level of information processing that went beyond basic behaviours. The fact that tar was so widely used among Neanderthals indicates that knowledge of how to make it spread throughout the population, most likely including the required teamwork. Evidence that Neanderthals mastered the production of birch bark tar as an adhesive has sparked an important and timely debate about behavioral complexity. Birch tar, the first synthetic adhesive ever produced, was most likely heated in low oxygen earth ovens, also known as anthropogenic combustion structures. Manufacturing synthetic materials contributes significantly to our cognitive advantage over other animals because it necessitates sentient thought, planning, and understanding of our behavior in order to transform raw materials using a learned process. The possibility that Neanderthals developed a sophisticated technique for turning birch bark into glue suggests that they were really interested in chemistry long ago. Another study discovered that Neanderthals living in caves in Italy were visiting nearby pine forests to gather sap to use as an adhesive. Pine sap must be heated over a fire in order to transform it into a liquid adhesive because it hardens when exposed to the air. The proof that Neanderthals were cognitively sophisticated has only grown in recent years, as archaeological data shows that many of the innovations that were once thought to be exclusive to modern humans were actually used by Neanderthals. Anyone who prefers to view modern human intelligence as an exceptional uniqueness may find it advantageous at this point to acknowledge that Neanderthals were also human. Only the most savage, strongest, fastest, intelligent and adaptable humans survived to pass down their genes. Because of our tropical ancestry, we would be unable to live in cold latitudes unless we developed ways to cope with the temperatures. The ability of humans to adapt behaviorally was critical to our evolutionary success. Humans have less physical climatic adaptation than other primates, and behavioral adaptation is more rapid and adaptable than biological adaptation. Thus, humans are the ultimate wilderness survivors, thriving in nearly every ecological niche imaginable. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share, and explore our channel's other videos. Thank you, and take care.